Good evening, and welcome to the 66th commencement of Delaware County Christian School. We magnify the Lord tonight as we celebrate his steadfast love and faithfulness to these, his children, to each family represented here, to an academic institution committed to educating students who will serve God and impact the world through biblical thought and action. A few quick notes regarding our time together this evening. Restrooms are located on the ground level of the barn, directly behind you, along with a few portable restrooms off to uh, my right and left. We also encourage you to access the water stations directly behind you as needed throughout the evening. If you please take a moment now to silence your cell phone if you haven't done so already. Greatly appreciate that. I'd like to thank Rick Elliott, Jake Dino, Allison Stinger, Catherine Jin, Beth Pass, Shannon Schreiber, Allie Horton, David Andrega, Robert Herrick, Debbie Elkin, and especially the beloved Elizabeth Neal, along with a host of others who have worked tirelessly to make this evening possible. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. I'm honored tonight to offer a few introductory thoughts on this momentous evening for DC's graduating class of 2023, a class marked by perseverance, character, and hope. Their freshman year was jarringly interrupted by a global pandemic, and yet the hills and valleys of their journey have led to a senior year punctuated by leadership and vibrant new rhythms of flourishing on campus, the pioneering of a new schedule and personal responsibility time, the student union as a life-giving hub for community fellowship, annual retreats, retreats to the Jersey Shore, the Center for Innovation, sale weeks, lunchtime discipleship groups, community assemblies, Friday young girls, the grounds, the armory, and now even sushi as an occasional lunch option. In all of this, DC has sought to cultivate in these graduates a posture of heart and mind oriented toward faithful stewardship. As stewards, we are called to invest the time, talent, and intellect among many other things that God has given us. These things are not our own, but gifts for which we are accountable. We desire to send winsome disciples out in many directions from this place, equipped to lead lives of impact, marked by a relaxed confidence, a confidence not merely in their skills and intellect, but in their Savior's finished work on their behalf. For we are God's handiwork, Paul reminds us, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. As our graduates head off to college and career, they will be reminded by caring adults of the many things that young Christians navigating the current landscape should avoid. And this advice is important and has its place. But I would submit that good, virtuous, and purpose-filled life that Christ modeled and which he calls us to is characterized more by what we do than by what we don't do. Yes, our salvation depends solely on the work Christ has already done on our behalf. Our sanctification, however, compels us to both action and adventure today. For Christians to be salt and light, we cannot define ourselves merely by the behaviors and undertakings from which we abstain, but also by the life-giving endeavors he inspires in our hearts and places in our paths. We are called to offer the world a vision for another way of life altogether, a full life, the kind of life for which Christ was willing to make the greatest sacrifice. I came, he said, that they may have life and have it abundantly. He modeled a life poured out for others, breaking bread with loved ones, friends, and even enemies, reading and studying, discussing ideas, caring for the sick and needy, stepping away regularly to commune with the Father, and ultimately laying down his own life. May the class of 2023 steward their gifts, their education, their relationships, and their lives with humility and intention. And may our school community be faithful to pray for them as they follow the Spirit's lead into lives of abundance found in Christ alone. At this time, I'd ask you to direct your attention to the far side of the field for the procession of graduates.
Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we just thank you for this class, dear Lord. We just thank you for covering them the entire year, dear Lord. Thank you for what the parents gave to make this come true for them. Dear Lord, we just thank you for the administrative staff here at Delaware County Christian School, dear Lord. Their hard work has proven them worthy, dear Father. Bless the grandparents, bless the parents, bless the families that has given their time to make sure that their family members are standing here today. Dear Father, bless them as they go into a trade school, a college, or just decide to stay home. Father, continue to send an angel to protect them, dear Lord. Father, we just thank you for our ministry staff. We thank you most of all for the teachers who have given all of their time to provide for our students, dear Lord. Just bless them. Father, we thank you for the maintenance department. We thank you for the bus drivers. We just thank you for the kitchen people who help these students, dear Lord. Father, as they leave today, send an increase of students to Delaware County Christian School to fill in for them that are leaving, dear Lord. Father, we love you, we magnify you, we lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you, if you're able to stand, as we sing together.
Good evening, DC community. Thank you for being here tonight to celebrate the class of 2023. To begin, I would like to recognize all of the teachers, mentors, and coaches who have dedicated themselves to our academic, personal, and spiritual growth. You have passionately encouraged us to use our gifts to glorify and learn more about God. By caring for us, you have undoubtedly influenced each of us. Looking back, I remember our class's rather chaotic reputation in elementary and middle school. Through the drama of switching from two to three sections in sixth grade, and many social changes as we became teens, our teachers selflessly guided us through those years. More recently, the pandemic significantly impacted our high school experience. From spending the end of our freshman year on Zoom to a 100-minute block schedule in sophomore year, our teachers adapted to teach us everything we needed to learn despite these unforeseen changes. Thank you for persevering for us and pointing us to God through any challenge. Secondly, I would like to thank the parents and guardians who have sent us here. You have dedicated time and resources towards Christian education and supported us through our journeys. We are grateful for all the ways you took care of us, whether it was cooking, driving, advising, or cheering for us. I know that many of our commitments turn out to also be a time commitment for our families. For mine, it was tennis and haiku. For my classmates, it might have been rehearsals, club meetings, or practices and games for other sports. I know my mom and many other class parents went even further by organizing snacks and parties for clubs, teams, and class socials. Your care and support has been foundational to all of our achievements, and your guidance has shaped in us values that will continue to influence our lives. Finally, I would like to thank the class of 2023. Even though I've never been much of a social person, you all have been in my community for the past 13 years. If you knew me during elementary school, I was probably too shy to talk to you. To those of you who adopted me as a friend, thank you for helping me grow. To all of you, thank you for my best memories of DC. When looking back, I specifically remember recess and holiday parties in elementary school, field trips and art classes in middle school, and retreats and spirit weeks in high school. Through all of these, I learned the importance and joy of community. I think we should thank each other for inspiring and being present for each other throughout the years. As we move forward, I hope we continue to treasure our memories of DC not just for sentimental reasons, but to reflect on God's timing of events and placing of people in our lives to shape us according to his will. Thank you. Hello, my name is Shannon Schreiber, and I have the honor of presenting this year's 2023 Timothy Awards. These are given by the Alumni Office, and they are voted on by the students' peers in the senior class. Seniors were asked to consider who among their class best exemplifies 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. This year's recipients both demonstrate Christ-like character throughout their everyday actions. As members of our student body, they demonstrated quiet but effective leadership. Most notably, they've set an example of being upright in their speech, choosing to build up, encourage, and point their peers to Christ. They have each been a delight to our community. The first recipient is a member of the National Honor Society, a captain on the soccer and lacrosse teams, 
has served in student leadership and as a tutor, a student ambassador, and as a Sunday school volunteer. On a recent trip to the DR, she led by example in her diligence. In addition to all of this, she is a prolific baker and chooses to bless others throughout her joy for the culinary arts. This fall, she will be attending Wheaton College, majoring in computer science. Please join me in congratulating Ava Skofsma. Our next recipient is an, also a member of the National Honor Society, Student Ambassador Cabinet, the varsity soccer team, and both the winter and spring track teams. He has set an example as a teammate, often stopping to encourage others. If you've driven around campus, you've likely seen this student training hard, putting in the miles. His consistent example and work ethic extend beyond school and can be seen out and about in the community as well. His entrepreneurial spirit and natural problem solving led him to success in DC's elevator pitch competitions. This fall, he will be attending Clemson's Honor College pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering. Please join me in congratulating Andrew Coe. All right, bear with me. I got a couple boxes and some prizes here. I am Shalina Marshall. I'm the Dean of Students at the Upper School. And it is my honor to present the Christian Service Award to two seniors. The Christian Service Award is given to a senior who is willing to serve, serves with a Christ-like attitude, serves while giving God the glory. Nominations for this award are from and voted by our high school faculty. The award itself is based on the verses found in Mark 10, verses 43 through 45. Whoever wants to become great among you must be a servant, and whoever wants to be first must be a servant of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. With that said, when you think all this award represents, you think of this young gentleman. He serves all the time. He serves even when he isn't asked and does so without need for recognition. He serves in Sunday school. He's a member of our robotics team and of course with our theater and tech. In fact, I even heard him say to Mrs. French the other day, call me if a needs come up and I will come and help. That's because Luke will be attending Eastern University and is literally around the corner. This young man, Luke Pulliam, embodies service and what it means to serve in a Christ-like manner. I know he has left a mark on our community and definitely a mark on my heart as I've gotten to know him this year. We are definitely going to miss you here, Luke. But watch out, because we might call you back sooner than you know. Come on up. Please help me congratulate Luke Coy.
much like Luke, our second recipient has a heart for Jesus. You see this in the way she engages with others in theater, and especially in the position she's held as the student life prefect and as a member of the worship team. This student leads with love and grace in all that she does and constantly invites others into that space. Rachel McAneeny knows that life on this side of earth is not just about getting things done, but doing it to build the kingdom. Being a servant of the Lord isn't just about doing, though Rachel does a lot. It is about your character and the way you reflect Christ in all you do, and she reflects Christ daily. Rachel, I will miss your sweet smile and ability to brighten every day, but we know Florida Gulf Coast University will be blessed just as we have been. Please help me in congratulating Rachel McAneeny. All right, it's also my pleasure to present the National Honor Society Service Award. The criteria for this award are students who have served the DC community extensively and have exhibited a willing, humble, and service-oriented heart. Teachers and coaches nominate and vote on the winners of this award. It seems our first recipient has been receiving awards and recognition since the beginning of junior year, and probably even before that. To name a few, this recipient has won the President's Award for Educational Excellence, a Good Citizenship Award presented by the Union League, and on top of this, has been a standout athlete in basketball, lacrosse, and tennis. And I'm sure she's just getting started. Sarah Stahl is dedicated, a natural leader, and man, oh man, does she have a heart for God. Being admissions prefect not only requires time, management skills, and the like. You can come on. <laughs> but here at DC, we are all about Jesus and a life of impact for the kingdom. And Sarah does this well. Congratulations. All right, our male recipient is just as high achieving and impressive. To name a few things for him, he's an amazing cellist, was our communications prefect, a student ambassador for admissions, and was one of our featured speakers for the NHS induction ceremony. In his speech for NHS, Grant Kane was bold in connecting our experience of education with God's creation, stating, we are given the opportunity to deeply understand God's creation through education. And later he then said, throughout your educational path, speaking to the students, you are given the chance to care to care about what doesn't seem applicable to you. And he said, don't let the chance pass you by. Well, Grant, we can see that you did not let the chance pass you by. Please help me in congratulating Grant King. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jake Johnson, and I've attended DC for the past 14 years. You may think that since I've been attending DC for, the, for so long, I must have had an easy journey through school, but it was quite the opposite. I was the definition of a troublemaker. 
My troublemaking days started in kindergarten with Miss Goods and Miss Briggs, where I was upset that I wasn't allowed to go to take your kid to work day, so I ripped up my math quiz and tried to hit Miss Briggs while storming out of the classroom. The story continues in third grade with Miss Bell. Miss Bell, if you're here, I apologize for what you had to go through that day, or that year. In third grade, I punched Nick Vavlo during recess because he tripped me during a game of soccer and told me I tripped on a pile of dirt. Fast forward to sixth grade, where I would sit in the office for a few, for a few hours every Wednesday because I refused to dance during a dance cell course. Then we jumped to when I was a freshman in Mr. Scare's Bible class, where I refused to learn. This is... Yeah. This is the year that the world shut down due to COVID. I fell into a depression because I felt lonely and I thought I had no purpose. During the lockdown, I would stay inside and do nothing all day. These patterns went on throughout my freshman year and they gradually improved during my sophomore year. As I look back at these tough times, I see that God strategically placed people in my life who were able to connect with me on a personal level. Whether it was my friends at school, my friends at church, the counselor I met with twice a week, my parents. These relationships helped me think beyond my self-centered world. This realization changed me and it motivated me. I realized that I needed to start actually caring about my schoolwork and about my worth ethic. That year, I became more intentional about what I was doing at school. I took my schoolwork more seriously and I created relationships with my teachers. For example, Mr. Shaq and I would do the MBA wordle at the end of every physics class and Mr. Michael and I would create TV show character charts. These relationships motivated me to continue to be intentional and to not take for granted the God-filled teachers there at DC. I want to thank all the teachers along the way that have supported me through, throughout my entire time. It means more than you know. The relationships I had with my friends and my teachers motivated me to strengthen my relationship with God. Throughout this time, I went on several mission trips to help me learn more about myself and God's work in my life. This led to me getting baptized in the summer before my senior year. As I look back at my upbringing, this one thing that I finally realized, that God was with, was with me through everything. God was with me when I punched Nick in third grade. God was with me when I refused to dance in that sail class. God was with me when I refused to learn in Mr. Scare's Bible class, and God was with me through the tough times I had in quarantine. But the one thing that sticks with me today is that no matter how far away I walk from God, as soon as I turn my back towards him, he is right there with open arms welcoming me home. Thank you. I'm excited to recognize a few high achieving students who performed well on the 2021 PSAT. Of the 1.6 million students who took the 2021 PSAT, 34,000 high performers are named commended students. These students earned a selection index score above 207, which is about an average of 650 on each section. Um, below the state required score for semifinalist recognition. Two seniors in the class of 2023 are being recognized as National Merit Commended Students. I would like to recognize these seniors for their exceptional academic promise demonstrated by their outstanding performance on the 2021 PSAT. This commended student from the class of 2023 will be attending Case Western University in the fall. I am pleased to present this certificate to Grant Kane. Case Western Reserve University. I should know that. This commended student from the class of 2023 will attend the Lee University in the fall. I am pleased to present this certificate to Blake Tannis. Sixteen thousand students who took the 2021 PSAT were named National Merit semifinalists 
for earning a selection index score on the PSAT that put them in the top 1% of their state. After completing an application, all semifinalists who meet the requirements are then named National Merit Finalists. There is one senior in the class of 2023 who was named the National Merit Finalist and was awarded one of the 7,500 merit scholarships from the group of 15,000 semi or finalists. She will be attending the University of California at Irvine in the fall. I am pleased to present the certificate to Ashley Zhao. All right, at this point in our program, I have the honor of presenting the Scholastic Awards for the class of 2023. Scholastic Awards are given to the four seniors with the highest weighted grade, grade point averages over their after school careers, grades nine and 12. Seniors, as I say your name, please come forward. The senior with the fourth highest weighted GPA of 5.030 is Zachary Metzler. Zach will be attending American University in the fall. He's a member of the National Honor Society and has been in... Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, sorry, it is recipient of the President's Award uh, of the Academic... Uh, of, pardon me, President's Award for Academic Excellence as well as the Lincoln United States Government and Politics Award. Zach's deep passion for public uh, service and politics have inspired him to serve not only on a recent senatorial campaign, but also as a member of a local congresswoman's youth cabinet. He has decided from an early age that his life will be dedicated to serving, uh, serving others. Zach's intellectual curiosity, fortitude, and determination will serve him well in his future endeavors. Please join me in congratulating Zach. The senior with the third highest GPA of 5.186 is Grant Kane. Come on up, Grant. Grant will be attending the Case Western Reserve University in the fall as a member of the National Honor Society, has served as a development prefect during his senior year. As a junior, Grant was the recipient of an Outstanding Artist Award from the Arts Department, as well as Good Citizenship Award bestowed by the Union League in Philadelphia. Additionally, Grant is an accomplished cellist and a Latin scholar. He is erudite, charitable, and humble. Please join me in congratulating Grant. Ranked second in the class with a GPA of 5.242 is Hannah Yang. Come on, come on up. Hannah has been at DC since first grade. She'll be attending Penn State University in the fall. She's a member of the National Honor Society and has been both a co-captain and MVP for our highly successful Haiku team. She has played girls tennis and served on the staff of both the Red Team and Yearbook. Hannah has been a recipient of the Rising Artist Award two times as well as a Computer Graphics Award from the Arts Department. She was recipient of the 2022 Templeton uh, Scholarship Award and the 2023 Millborn Award for Aptitude and Excellence in Biology. Hannah has given up her time in service to, to others as, at a, as a Tech Girls Workshop volunteer, along with time spent volunteering at the Brandywine Valley SPCA. Hannah is an earnest and unassuming steward of the many gifts God has given her. Please join me in congratulating Hannah. With a weighted GPA of 5.267, Ava Scotsman is ranked number one in DC's class of 2023. Ava will be attending Wheaton College in the fall. Like Hannah, Ava has also been a DC student since the first grade. She's a member of the National Honor Society, has been an impact player on both the soccer and lacrosse teams throughout her upper school career. She is a recipient of the President's Award for Academic Excellence, as well as the Yale University Book Award. She served and led faithfully in student government for three out of her four years in upper school, while also giving over time as a math tutor and Sunday school helper. Ava is brilliant and authentic, and she has an easy way about her. 
garnering the respect and admiration of all in her orbit, orbit pardon me, peers and adults alike. Please join me in congratulating the Ava Scotts from the DC Valedictorian for the last 20 years. Who here has a dog? My family has two, and I don't know about anyone else's dogs, but ours absolutely despise the vet. They get there and they start shaking and whining, the poor animals are convinced that the vet is a diabolical monster. You might be wondering right about now how dogs in the vet relate to the future of the DC class of 2023. Let me explain. While preparing for the speech, I came across a quote from an unknown source that says something like this. Adulthood is like the vet. And we are like the dogs that were excited for the car ride until we realized where we were going. <laughs> Adulthood can seem like this. Bleak, dull, difficult. Another quote I stumbled upon compares this stage of life to looking both ways before you cross the street and then getting hit by an airplane. <laughs> People around us tell us to cherish our youth because that's the best it's gonna get. Or I often hear the analogy that life is like a hamster on a hamster wheel. You start scampering faster and faster on the wheel and you never get back off again. You start working harder and harder and you scarcely get to rest again. On a more serious note, it is often insinuated by culture that our school and college years are preparing us for a long defeat. The defeat of a nine to five job, the defeat of adulthood, the defeat of life. Fellow graduates, faculty, parents, and attendees, I'm not quite sure if I'm really qualified to talk to you all today since honestly, I'm still trying to figure out life as much as anyone else. However, as I look towards the future of our class, I intend to challenge this grim view of the rest of our lives. One of my favorite books I have read is called Love Does by Bob Goff. You may have heard of the book, or the author, or perhaps you've read it, using hilarious and captivating examples of his radical attitude towards life Goff challenges the reader to live a life of gratitude and to love actively. He points out again and again how we're not called to a life where we refuse to put love into action, where we turn down the invitation to live. Instead, we're inspired and empowered by God's love for us to live the kind of life where, simply put, love does. But what does this practically look like? How do we implement this type of love into our lives? Goff asserts in Love Does that living a different kind of life takes some guts and grit and a new way of seeing things. I couldn't agree more. Transforming the way you live and love starts with changing how you view life. So let's take a step back and reframe the lens with which we perceive our lives. C.S. Lewis says in Mere Christianity that every faculty you have, your power of thinking or of moving your limbs from moment to moment is given you by God. If you devoted every moment of your whole life exclusively to his service, you could not give him anything that was not in a sense his own already. Do you view your life like that? Do you see your life and everything in it as a gift? I know I don't. I tend to be a pessimist and a complainer. Maybe some of you can relate to that. But what I've realized is that when I have negative thoughts, 
I merely need to flip them on their head. Like most people, I certainly cannot always control what thoughts pop into my head. However, we as human beings have the ability to correct and redirect our thoughts. We can reframe our thinking, deciding to focus on some things rather than others, choosing to focus on gratitude. We ought to do this not only because gratitude leads to a happier life, but also because we are called to a life of gratitude by God. All actions originate from our minds, so if we can learn to think about things differently, we will begin to live differently. If you were to look up the definition of love, the first result on Google would claim that it is an intense feeling of deep affection. However, I believe the most beautiful definition of love is not this one. In mere Christianity, Lewis declares that love in the Christian sense does not mean an emotion. He says that it is a state not of the feelings, but of the will. Lewis explains that when we cannot find feelings of love for someone within us, instead of trying to manufacture feelings, we ought to simply act as if we did love them. We are to ask ourselves, if I were sure I loved so-and-so, what would I do? When we have found this answer, Lewis encourages us to go and do it. Consequently, when we act in love towards that person, feelings of love will eventually follow. 1 John 3.18 says this, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. God puts it this way. Authentic love pursues blindly, unflinchingly, and without end. When you go after something you love, you'll do anything it takes to get it, even if it costs everything. And is this not the example Christ sets for us? Christ's life, ministry, death, and resurrection Reveal the type of love that God has for us, and it is certainly a love that pursues us unflinchingly without end. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Similarly, 1 John 4, 19 declares, we love because he first loved us. Therefore, we are encouraged to step forth into the world, propelled by the radical love that God has shown for us. Love is determination. It is saying yes to things that make us feel uncomfortable or seem to be inconvenient. It is acting in obedience to God even when we don't feel like it. When we enable this type of love, the truest type of love, to seep into every part of our lives, it will introduce us to a world of whimsy, a world of hope, a world where love does. Class of 2023, our future doesn't need to be something we dread. It does not have to become mundane. It can be something that we're excited about. It's about the perspective you take on your future. You can uncondition yourself from being ungrateful or unsatisfied. You can say yes to new opportunities. You can resolve to see your life in a new way, the way God sees it. You can choose to pursue love. My favorite quote from Love Does, and perhaps the quote that best sums up the book, is when Goff says this, there is only one invitation it would kill me to refuse. Yet, I'm tempted to turn it down all the time. I get the invitation every morning when I wake up to actually live a life of complete engagement, a life of whimsy, a life where love does. It doesn't come in an envelope. It's ushered in by a sunrise, the sound of a bird, 
or the smell of coffee drifting lazily from the kitchen. It's the invitation to actually live, to fully participate in this amazing life for one more day. Nobody turns down an invitation to the White House, but I've seen plenty of people turn down the invitation to fully live. So I challenge you, graduates, faculty, parents, attendees, are you going to accept the daily invitation to change your perspective, to love actively, and to wholly participate in your life? Or are you going to spend your time on earth worried, distracted, and indifferent to the astonishing beauty of God's gift of life? The choice is yours. Thank you.
How we doing? Uh, my name is Mike Pinelli. I'm the current director of Lex here at Delaware County Christian School. And I had the honor and privilege of reading this senior's class's verse. Uh, this verse is Romans 5, 3 through 5. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Thank you. So I have the privilege tonight of introducing our commencement speaker, Dr. David King. Dr. King served for over a decade as the 13th president of Malone University in Canton, Ohio. He arrived at Malone in 2012 from nearby Eastern University, where he served for 20 years in positions of increasing responsibility, including executive dean and chief development officer for the Campolo College of Graduate Professional Studies, vice president for administration, and director of human resources before culminating his tenure serving as the university's provost. Under his leadership, Malone University developed an innovative approach to adapting to the rapidly changing higher education landscape, launched new programs such as cybersecurity, criminal restorative justice, and urban studies, established a new framework for offering online programs, including fully online bachelor's of social work, master's in counseling, and MBA, secured multiple million-dollar gifts toward $25 million capital campaign, resulting in the completion of the Timken Center for Student Success and the Pioneer Park Competition Field, developed and launched uh, women's and men's lacrosse as intercollegiate sports, and secured more than 100 partnerships with Northeast Ohio organizations. So I'm feeling a little wet. I'm going to keep pushing through. In my experience, nothing says hope for the future better than the energy, the curiosity, the critique, passion, enthusiasm, and boldness of you graduates taking your first steps into the future. My objective today is add, to add to the hope that you bring. Among the many things I have learned across three decades plus of leadership in Christian higher education are that the chief hallmarks of a well-received commencement address are brevity and succinctness. And though, by the way, some people just doesn't hurt as well. And even if one achieves these characteristics, it does not guarantee being worthy of memory. So my simple aim today is to go to the commencement hat trick. Brief, succinct, and with a note or two of memory. Graduates, in our brief time together, I have three ways in which I want to challenge you in this threshold moment. First, stay close to God. Secondly, stay at the table. And thirdly, be available as a precious metal. While we celebrate the achievement of your high school diploma, today we are about to launch you. Launch you into a lifelong journey of exploration, of discovery, of purpose, of calling, and of service. Until now, you have largely inhabited the familiar waters, familiar waters of family, school, and church. Moving forward, while keeping a foot in these familiar waters, you will undoubtedly be challenged by new waters. Waters that will often include unknown deaths, unpredictable currents, disturbing pollutants, dangerous drip tides, and turbulent white water. The discipline you've exercised thus far in cultivating and nurturing your relationship with Jesus Christ will be challenged, and perhaps, at times, challenged beyond your current capacity. As important as it is that DC has taught you to, to succeed at your coursework, and meet the requirements for graduation, more importantly, DC has prepared you to learn, to be a lifelong learner. To learn to ask questions, not just to answer questions. To learn to know God, not just to believe in God. This is reflected in the very first of DC's student outcomes, which states, articulate an understanding of the truth of who Jesus Christ is, that is knowledge, 
and demonstrate personal spiritual disciplines. That is life altering belief. So my first and highest word of counsel as you cross the Stephen special is to stay close to God. Stay close to God by increasing the priority and intentionality of your spiritual disciplines. Your reading suggestion, previously done before tonight as an assignment, is Richard Foster's timeless classic, Spiritual Disciplines, The Path to Spiritual Growth. As you intentionally cultivate your spiritual disciplines, keep in mind a caution that Foster shares at the beginning of That is, to know the mechanics of spiritual disciplines such as prayer, meditation, study, worship, and confession does not mean that we are practicing the disciplines. The spiritual disciplines, Foster says, are an inward and spiritual reality, and the inner attitude of the heart is far more crucial than the mechanics. At this moment, your questions of what is next, where you will live, and what your career will look like are understandably foremost in your mind. Yet, to paraphrase Henry Allen, these questions are insignificant compared to the question of how to keep the eyes of your heart focused on the Lord. Exploring Foster's practices and exercising an array of spiritual disciplines will equip you to live in the presence of God, even as the world around you challenges the existence of God. Secondly, graduates, stay at the table. In the words of David Brooks in his column just last month, what our toxic culture does to the young, you have grown up in a media culture that generates ratings and clicks by generating division and anger. You have grown up in a political culture that magnifies a sense of menace, that presumes that other people are toxic in order to tell simplistic us-them stories and mobilize people's fears. Brooks' characterization reminds us that the world my generation is bequeathing to you is a world teeming with diversity, right with morality, and torn by division. Yet, God calls us to community. By the many examples in the Gospels of the ways in which Jesus sought out and invited in the marginalized in the cultural context of the day, it is clear God is not calling us to a monochromatic or superficial community. Rather, He is calling us to deep, complex, diverse, ecumenical, and true community. Your suggested reading as a source of encouragement is a brief essay by Barbara Palmer entitled Staying at the Table, A Spirituality of Community. In his essay, Paul reminds us of the high standard that Jesus once again provides as he models community in the midst of diversity and division. Using the Lord's Supper as an exemplar, Paul reminds us that Jesus models staying at the table even as his disciples were about to abandon and betray him. In the words of Paul, blind to their own capacity for betrayal and obsessed with power struggles, the disciples at the table act out two of the issues that make community life so painfully difficult, denial and lust for power. And what does Jesus do in the midst of all this? Being fully human, he must have been tempted to get up and leave just as you and I are when our romantic images of community fail. But Jesus does not leave. Instead, he stays at the table and keeps breaking the bread and passing the cup. In a recent essay, Why Jesus Loved Friendship, Peter Lear, recounting a conversation with Pastor Renee Lockman, said it this way, Our witness is not right doctrine. Our witness is our relational orientation. As friends of Jesus, we love one another, and that includes people different from us. In fact, no one can be an other, because in Christ, we belong to one another. We are called to love one another, honor one another, welcome one another, encourage one another, and bear one another's burdens. We are to be an aroma of blessing, hope, joy, peace, and love. In addition to diversity, morality, and division, the world you're about to inhabit as an adult is pervasive in its denial of God's existence and drunk with its lust for power and supremacy. Your warm, steady, and invitational 
presence uh, at the table as an image bearer of God will represent the steadfast love of God. Or, as stated in D.C. State 2 now comes, because of your presence, others will appreciate how human diversity within the community provides a multifaceted reflection of the image of God. And lastly, be available as a precious metal for, for God's purpose of restoration and reconciliation. Your suggested reading to explore this further is MacArthur Fitchamora's book entitled Art and Faith, A Theology of Making. Fitchamora is an artist who, among other art forms, is a master in the ancient Japanese art of Kintsugi. Dating back hundreds of years, Kintsugi is the process of repairing valued pottery, traditionally Japanese tea sets with the revered of Japanese culture. By using precious metals, gold, silver, platinum. This art form not only repairs broken pottery, but restores it to even greater value than its original form. The world you are about to inhabit, graduates, is in desperate need of God's restoration and renewal. Will you be an agent of reconciliation in a world in desperate need of bridges to overcome divisions, peace to overcome conflict, and restoration to overcome brokenness? Will you submit to God's refining fire as a precious metal to be used by Him to restore and add greater value to the brokenness within your reach? Which of our reminders, God is not just meant to repair and restore. God renews and generates, transcending our expectations of even what we desire, beyond what we dare ask or imagine. Your high school graduation is one of life's liminal moments. You have arrived at successful completion, and you are also approaching a starting point. As you begin the next chapter in your life story, each of you can make a difference in the world into which we welcome you. Each of you can be an agent, an agent of hope and reconciliation. As you stay close to God, stay at the table, and make yourself fully available to God as a precious metal in his reconciling and restoring hands. And as you strive to achieve these ends, do not let the finite boundaries of your imagination limit the cosmic constellation of God's love for you, his purpose for you, and his plans for you. Godspeed, and may you always have in sufficient measure God's restoring companionship in your pilgrimage. Thank you.
Senior class is invited to support initiatives they value as part of their easy education with a commitment of $20 to 20 cents over the next 10 years. At their 10-year class reunion, a plaque will be unveiled listing the names of those in each class who have completed their Gold Club commitment. For members of the class of 2020 who have already today joined the Gold Club, please stand and recognize. Please, please stand and recognize. Special thank you to Hannah Yang, salutatorian. Thank you for sharing your comments this evening. You can give her a round of applause. Special thank you to Ava Skasma, our valedictorian, for her comments this evening. I happen to know as a fact there are many Bob Goff fans on the faculty and staff as well, so well done. And uh, can we thank Jacob Johnson for sharing his testimony with us this evening. I pray that this commencement exercise and is a testimony, and the testimonies you've heard from the graduates themselves serves and reflects the notable difference of an education that's rooted in Christ. Parents and family members, on behalf of the Delaware County Christian School Board, faculty and staff, thank you for partnering with DC in a Christian education for your family. Dr. King, thank you for a challenging and spirit-filled commencement address. We're honored to have the family of our first head of school, Roy Lowry, rec recognized and represented here in this ceremony this evening. Thank you for being here. Today, we also want to pause and honor the Tannis family with the graduation of Blake Tannis, the last Tannis grandchild. For now, we are all excited and we hope to see great grandchildren here attending DC at some point in the future. Can we ask Blake Tannis and his parents to please rise? <laughs> well,
We're honored to have with us here this evening, and Blake is going to give and present a floral bouquet to Willie Tannis, Ken's wife. Thank you, Willie, for being with us here this evening. Well, in this moment, we want to recognize the legacy of DC's second head of school, Kenneth H. Tannis, who served from 1980 to 2002. Blake and his parents and Willie are here, as you've seen this evening. Ken led DC with a passion for Christian education. Under Ken's leadership, DC continued to grow and to flourish, reaching several milestones, including the addition of the second campus in 1983. The DC we enjoy today is largely the result of the faithful servants who have come before us. Those faithful servants include administrators such as Ken Tanis and very talented faculty, teachers who invest in our students on a daily basis, represented by Willie Tanis here tonight. On behalf of the Tanis family and to honor their father and his passion for Christian education, the Kenneth H. Tanis Endowment has been established. Ken Tanis, DC's second head of school, had a heart for families who made financial or trade-offs to ensure their children received a Christian education. Ken was especially the champion for families who faced a temporary hardship or an emergency situation and they had to make the difficult choice to handle that situation, that emergency, or to pay tuition. The Kenneth H. Tannis Endowment provides tuition assistance for DC families who are facing a temporary financial hardship. Let's thank the Tannis family one more time for their faithful commitment and service to Delaware County Christian School. <laughs> Graduates, many times you have passed the plaque outside of the mansion as you enter into the mansion building, Proverbs 1-7. For 73 years, this verse has served as a guidepost for Delaware County Christian School. All of you know it, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The words of this verse are just as relevant today as they were when DC opened its doors in 1950. Start with God, Proverbs 1-7 says. The first step in learning is bowing down to God. As we celebrate together this evening the culmination of your K-12 journey, I pray, we collectively pray together that you will remember this important truth. And know that DC is and always will be your home. In fact, let me be the first to welcome you officially as DC alumni. We'll welcome you back on campus any day, any time, as you move into your future journeys. Graduates, sons, daughters, as you leave DC, may you keep your eyes on the Lord. May you understand and know him who practices love, justice, and righteousness. May you walk in wisdom and in might, and may the steadfast desire of your heart be to delight in the Lord. Because as you've heard repeatedly tonight from your peers and from adults around you, he certainly delights in each one of you. God bless each of you. As we turn to awarding our diplomas, I want to finally recognize one other special individual among us this evening. At this time, I'd like to invite our board president, Megan King, and our head of upper school, Mark Dixon, on stage. We're now going to honor every individual in the class of 2023 as we read the name of each graduate, and they will come to receive their diploma. Graduates, we're going to have you stand in your row where you are. As your name is called, you will just head over and see Mr. Dixon, Mrs. King, and then you'll circle back around to the back end of your row and file in accordingly. So here we go. Would row one please rise. Nilafar Asadi. Kakyan Christabel Chan. Maya Christine Collins. Oh, 
Alexa Jade Cook. Wyatt Peter Cook. Sky Violet Corchamelia. Corinne Noel Creedon. Would row two please rise? Levi Gian Dental. Sierra Joy Rain Driggins. Elise Emerine Engelman. Jacob Nils Johnson. Grantham Terrence Kane. Philip Randall King. Would row three please rise? Andrew Noah Coe. Rachel Audrey McEnany. Zachary Daniel Metzler. Stephanie Grace Morhatch. Titus Keith Myers. <laughs> Ebezi Oganakome Omuye. <laughs> Ayana Nicole Park. Would row four please rise? Ross Christopher Payson. Caitlin Ruth Pulliam. Luke Edward Pulliam. Lindsay Grace Rodano. <laughs> Ava Kathleen Scotsma. <laughs> Kyler Saheed Freeman.
one more in this row. Sarah, sorry, Sarah Elizabeth Stahl. Would row five please rise? Andrea Julian Suen. Kellen Michael Tabor. Jinjua Nick Tong. Blake Andrew Tannis. Nicholas Joseph Vavila. Would row six please rise? Chloe Marie Walker. Candace Caitlin Wong. Shao <laughs> Ji Jerry Wong. <laughs> Anna Marie Wisniewski. Jiyuan Leo Chu. <laughs> Hannah Rachel Yang. <laughs> Ashley J. Yi Zhao. Will the class of 2023 please rise? Parents, we present to you the class of 2023. Would ask you to remain standing as we're led in prayer by Craig Tins.
But we also think about the next, cha next chapter of our lives and what will happen. Father, we ask for your provision, for your protection as they go forward with their plans, whatever they may be. We know that some of these men and women will achieve wonderful and amazing things, contributing mightily to their field, their careers, their jobs. In their successes, Father, may they always be reminded that all their gifts and abilities come from your people. We pray that they would be reminded that they may humbly, they will always humbly accept in all that you have given them to do, and that they would generously give up themselves for your glory and the good of others. You also know, oh merciful God, that some of these graduates will face difficult obstacles or losses even as they strive to succeed in excel. Maybe their efforts will be thwarted, or they will suffer physical or emotional setbacks so that the expectations they have for their own lives seem stalled or dashed. May they look back and remember that you are with them. Let them rediscover your care for them, your love for them, that you will be a refuge for them, where they can pour out their discouragements before you, and that you will encourage them by your spirit. There are also some in here, Father, who will drift from you, eager to experience what this world has to offer. And they will forget what their parents and DC teachers have taught them over these many years. Father, when they have come to the end of themselves, may they remember, as Jake Johnson has reminded us, that you are a patient God, you are slow to anger and abound in love. And just like the father of the prodigal son, you will gladly and joyfully run to them. Father, may they discover that you are a loving Father, not a taskmaster, and that they are deeply loved Son of God of yours. And finally, there are likely some of you here now sitting on, standing on the stage, God, who have already decided in their minds that you are a farce, a crutch to the weak and naive, and that believing you is not worth the effort, or that you have all the, they have all the knowledge that they need by their own self-discovery. O oh, gracious God, please protect them from lies about you. Meet them in their defiance and in their rejection of you, and in, their, and in your kindness reveal your true self to them, as you have done to many of us. Offer them the amazing grace that you have freely given to all of us who have received. And may they someday reconsider your claims, your track record of promises kept, and turn toward you so that they would declare your glory and your changed hearts. Father, we pray for the graduates now, but we all in this auditorium and who are viewing this online need your love and care. People from the DC community and in this room, we have fears, anxieties, and unmet expectations, and painful losses that maybe even tonight will cloud our joy. Meet us, loving God. Encourage us with your word, your spirit, and with your people. And remind us that we have all things through Jesus Christ. We commit these young men and these young women, these graduates, to your care tonight. We commit them to your protection. Bless them as you see fit in your perfect will. Strengthen them when they are discouraged or afraid. Strengthen them in their faith. We ask that you will remind them always that they will never. May your name be praised this evening, Father. May we honor you as we honor these women and men. For the glory of your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ, we bring these three plus before you. Amen. Amen.